All right, in the studio with us this hour, Jim Mulder from Wealth Keepers. Always fun to have you in here. Thank you. It's fun to be here. And, you know, he dresses up for us. Have you ever noticed that? He dresses up for everyone. Yeah, because Jim Blake came in here in a, in a Hawaiian style. shirt and flip flops and. <laughs> and liar. Yeah. <laughs> no, I saw Jim is like too. dressed, you even had cufflinks on today. I, I'm, I'm kind of amazed. Thank you. Yeah. Are you amphibious? Can you do that with both hands? Do what with both hands? <laughs> Put on your cuff. Oh, things. yes. Yes, I am. Oh, yeah. I am amphibious. Yes. Right. yes. Right. We, we had a bit I of a... think that actually means he could put on his cufflinks underwater. <laughs> Oh no! It, it, yeah, it it, it, it just means I don't need my wife's help. No, <laughs> <laughs> amphibious. Yes, I know. As opposed to ambidextrous. Yeah, right. <laughs> we asked a question before uh, before we jumped on with you this hour, and I I know you have the answer. It's kind of a quiz. What do Art Linkletter, J D. Salinger, and Glenn Bell, the guy who uh, started Taco Bell, what do those three guys all have in common? Uh, they all died without having to pay any estate tax. Without having to pay any estate tax. Well, at least unless Congress does something drastic this year to yeah. retroactively, in, you know, impose an estate tax. We're we're kind of sitting in a, in this sweet spot, this window of opportunity. Yes, if you're if you're very wealthy and you don't want to give anything to charity, uh, and you're very sick. And then now's the time to croak. And by charity, Jim, Jim actually means governmental charity. Well, no, regular charity. Because, charity, uh, yeah. you know, the, the planning technique for wealthy individuals before this year uh, was, uh, you know, either give half of your net worth to the government at death. Yeah. Or give a substantial amount of it to charity in qualifying uh, yeah. methods. Um and then avoid paying the tax. And so um, people that that had a lot of wealth, they would kind of be driven to the charitable aspect. I remember when, uh, ja you may not remember this, when Jackie Onassis died, uh -huh. um, she had basically a, a, a hybrid plan in her estate plan, which is very interesting to me, and, and I actually employed it a few times after I learned about it. Um, she provided that uh, everything went to her kids in various yeah. methods, but if they uh, chose not to accept a part or uh, all of it or any fractional interest or, or specific assets, it would go to charity, which would create a deduction. So, a deduction for whom? From the estate. Okay. So, uh, so let's let's make it simple. She had a quarter of a billion dollars. She had two hundred fifty million dollars of assets. She left them to her two kids. Yeah. Uh, but if the kids uh, didn't uh, want to pay half of that in estate tax, in other words, end up with half a loaf, uh, they could disclaim all or any part of it, and, and that part, part would go to charity. Right. Um, and from what I understand, they basically said, thanks, Mom, for giving us that opportunity, but we'll take the money. <laughs> <laughs> because half a loaf is better than none. Right. <laughs> so, um, uh, but at least it gave them the opportunity yeah. if they, if they uh, wanted to, if they felt like with their own other assets uh -huh. that they had through their other family members, because they're from wealthy families, you probably remember, mm -hmm. um, well, on both sides, I guess, um, they, um, they could have let a lot more go to, to charitable purposes, but mm -hmm. she gave them the key to do that. Yeah. Most people don't do that. Most people that have a lot of wealth, they basically hardwire in the charitable stuff. They actually set up a, their own private foundation and fund it with that and let the kids run it. Mm -hmm. Now, which is which is more advantageous, and does it depend upon your circumstances to hardwire it in or to give the kids the choice? Well, actually, that's a client decision, uh -huh. uh, and that's where um, part of what I like to do is make sure the clients understand all the different ways they can accomplish a, a, an objective and then yeah. let them choose. Uh, if you hardwire it in, then the client knows that the charitable purposes that they uh, want to have uh, see done are going to happen. If the client gives the children sort of the uh, intermediary step, uh, then they don't know at all. They, they, you know, they, they give the children purely the idea. So most people that do that latter plan, like Jackie Kennedy, uh, Onassis, um, they really aren't that charitably inclined. Yeah. You know, they, they, but they know it'll save taxes. The clients that are very charitably inclined, you know, like remember uh, uh, Warren Buffett. You know, he's got sure. Yeah, I don't mm -hmm. think he cares if he dies this year. I don't think he's going to 
change it so that it can go to his kids or his great grandkids or whatever, yeah. he's still going to let the bulk of his net worth or all of it, I'm not sure, uh, go into this charitable foundation, let Bill Gates run it. Um, so that person is very charitably oriented. Uh, so it just depends. So Congress has basically unintentionally incentivized death in 2010? Yes. Yeah, okay. When we come back, uh, we're going to share with you some details on a seminar that Jim is going to be holding very, very soon. Can I help you understand the ins and outs of all of this and some other strategies that you can employ to reduce your tax exposure? This is Stephen Kay with Brent Clinton. We'll have more from Jim Mulder in the next segment. It's 16 past on Talk 650 Morning Show, powered by CBS Radio.